How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm going to talk about finances and dating. Before I begin, this video is brought to you by Webull. Get five free shares of stock just for signing up and depositing one penny. One free share for opening up an account. Four more free shares for depositing at least one penny. In addition, get $5 worth of free crypto just for trading $1 worth of crypto. Check out my referral link down in the video description below. Before I really get down deep into this video, you guys should know that I am single and I am unmarried. I've never been married, but I've had had multiple girlfriends and currently I do have a girlfriend. So keep this in mind when you're listening to my advice on this. If you are the type that wants to get married really early, maybe like right after college or so, you probably don't want to listen to me. Now I am unmarried by choice because I've had girlfriends before that hinted at wanting to get married, but I did not want to. I was not sure that that was the right girl or not. So I'm gonna give a whole bunch of opinion on dating and finances and who should pay and whatnot. This is actually what works for me. And I understand that some people are probably less frugal. Maybe some guys are a lot more generous. They just want to give everything they have. And this is what works for me and may not work for you. Ultimately, who pays what, right? Whatever share amount that people are paying, I think it comes down to what you're comfortable with and what your partner is comfortable with. Now let's talk a little bit about gender equality. A guy and a girl, they both earn the same amount. The question is, should they be splitting the bill here? Generally speaking, I think when you're dating, even if you make equal amount, you still need to pay for the date for the first few dates at least. This might fall back to how guys are usually hunter gatherers, or it might be a cultural thing. I don't know, but this is what actually happened in my life. Whenever you have a good date, you naturally just want to pay. You know, it's no big deal. In the end, when you're dating, you're trying to court a girl. You are trying to show that you are financially stable. So paying a meal or two should not destabilize you. You should be generous enough, I guess, to, to go, hey, you know, let's, let's have a meal together. You gotta pay for something so that you can do something together. Personally, I don't do fast food as a first date. Being as cheap as I am, I am kind of like a foodie, so I would prefer to at least go to a medium end restaurant, I guess. I wanna say something about picking the girl up. If they don't want you to show up at their home because it's your first date, they don't know you know, if you are a safe person to be around. Let's say you are 40 miles apart, right? Trying to meet right in the middle, like 20 miles for each person, is probably a bad idea. You probably want to, on a first date, go much closer to the girl than the girl come to you. It's not like, you know, meet right in the middle type of thing. So I would say at least, I don't know, three quarter of the way. Uh, you know, for a first date. Now, so far, the things I've said is kind of lenient for, you know, the guy to pay everything and so. But as you guys know, being a frugal person, I also am aware to not be a walking ATM. You don't want to just bring the girl to wine and dine everywhere at all the fancy restaurants, and then you just keep on paying and paying date after date. This is not the way I think things should go. However, I am not oblivious to Man Jose where there is huge amount of competition over here. You have to do quite a bit extra to stand out and eligible females over here is pretty rare. Sometimes you see them at a party and they'll be surrounded by like 10 guys all trying to talk to them. And many times guys are ragging on each other. They're making fun of the other one just to make themselves look good. So. You know, this type of competition, I just don't even participate in. Suffice to say, I think any kind of mass social gathering is probably a bad idea if you're trying to meet someone in Man Jose. A better idea would be to pursue your own hobbies, be really good at it, and you need to do a hobby where they have both genders doing it, right? Not like only guys. I went to a radio control car place, right? There's there's only guys there. So you can't be doing that. You gotta be doing something else that, that involves um, male and female. This is the male to female ratio by state in 2021. I thought this was quite interesting. When you see 99 at the bottom over here, sex ratio, it's 99 males to 100 females. So that really means it's really, really close to one to one. If you look at New York, on the other hand, the sex ratio is 94 to 100, meaning 94 guys, to every 100 women there are out there in New York. If you work out the numbers, there's about 8 million people in New York. This means there's 260,000 
extra females that's just around. So for some weird reason, there are more females on the East Coast than on the West Coast. So if you are in San Jose, I say good luck and think about moving if you are having a hard time dating. Here's what I think about who should pay on a first date. When you go, you do your thing, you eat your meal, right? And when the check comes, yeah, the guy should reach for the pocket and try to pay. But I would like to see the woman do something, right? Like offer to pay. But then I think the guy should be like, no, 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 you know, I should, I should pay for all of it. I insist on paying all of it. And then, you know, maybe the girl should try a little bit, right? Not, maybe not too hard if she doesn't want to pay, but you know, in the end, okay, if the guy pays, then that's not the end of it, right? I think what would be the best date would be the girl later on saying, okay, let's go get a drink. Let's go get a dessert or something. And then the girl buys a dessert. So then there is, you know, sort of unequal pay here, but then at least the guy buys something and the girl brings something as well. But if the girl insists on splitting, you shouldn't fight too hard, right? Don't have a scene at the restaurant. So, okay, you go and split it. This is not a bad thing at all. This is actually a really positive thing. And you know, if you go to something else afterwards, well, the guy is gonna go pay for that, right? And then probably the girl is gonna offer to split again. So there's, you know, everything great there. There are other situations here. If the girl never offers to pay, right? doesn't even flinch when the bill comes. You just go, okay, you know, I'll pay. If you do something else, the guy ends up paying again, then I would say uh, there won't be a second date. That's just the way I've done it myself. Now, what if the date doesn't go well? I think to cut your losses, you probably should ask to split the bill. And this is okay. I mean, the girl can get mad at you and stuff, right? But you know, you're not gonna meet again. So it doesn't really matter. So just go ahead and split the bill. If the girl is really hot and you offer to pay and she doesn't flinch and you end up paying, right? You might be inclined to go, okay, you know, she's like such a hot girl. I'm gonna go after her. Of course, I'm gonna go and wine and dine her. This is probably a bad idea. You probably will end up paying for every single date thereafter. And this is just the type of girl that is, right? This type of girl expects you to, you know, just pay for everything. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this because there are some guys that's willing to pay and many girls that are willing to accept. And I think this can actually work out well for those couples if they are matched well, right? One guy is willing to give more, the girl is willing to take more. So, you know, it, it, it works out. It's like a symbiosis type of thing. So like I said, it really depends on the matching of, of the two people. For the second to the eighth date, you do something similar. This is like the courting phase. So then the guy will probably end up paying a little bit more. Splitting it down to the penny is probably a bad idea. It needs to be a little bit more ambiguous than that. But I think as you move from this dating phase to this steady boyfriend, girlfriend phase, you probably would end up paying a ratio that is similar to your earnings. If the guy earns, let's say twice as much as the girl, then, you know, overall, maybe when you're going out, the guy pays a little bit more, tw about twice as much as the girl. If both parties are earning about the same amount, I think the guy would still need to pay a, just slightly more. It's just the way culturally it has been. I think most of my viewers are pretty frugal and I've been in a relationship where the girl expects me to pay for everything. And for a while I try to do it because I like the person a lot. So my thinking was, okay, maybe I can deal with this and just pay. But then I think as the time goes on, the issue becomes bigger and bigger. So you really just have to know yourself. If you are the frugal type and you really don't want to pay for everything, well, you shouldn't be with someone that makes you pay for everything because this problem is just gonna get bigger and bigger. That just means that you're not really well fitted for this person. Something that you can look over for a while, it tends to grow a little bit more each time. And as you have a relationship, you probably will look at that as something that you gave to them. And then because you feel like there's an advantage given, you start to like look for other advantages, kind of take back from other areas, right? But they're not expecting to give back in other areas. You can only give and, and, and you know, there's no equality over here. Here's a little graph I want to throw in. And what is the basis of this? Me having multiple girlfriends, I had at least five girlfriends. I'm not going to say how many exactly I have. It's a little bit too personal, but this is dates 
versus bases graph. I've never seen anything like it. I created it myself just out of thin air. The blue is the minimum number of bases that you should have as you have the number of dates. Now zero base, right? Not touching at all. Second base, I'm not gonna talk about it. Third base, I'm not gonna talk about it. Fourth base, which is home run, I'm not gonna talk about it. You guys know what bases are. Through my dating experience, sometimes I would pay a lot more because sometimes I make a lot more than the girl. And so, you know, I feel generous. You know, I can just pay for sushi dinner or whatever, right? But I've noticed that if you pay for too long and you don't reach a certain milestone with these bases, then uh, there's something fishy going on. They just probably just want to treat you as an ATM, as a wine and dine associate or a friend, you know, that just, you know, just pays for all their stuff. So be very careful of this minimum here. If you are way below this minimum, then watch out. You know, you might have someone that is not respecting you. So the first date, you could just not have any bases at all. You just met, so, you know, no kissing or anything. You know, I'm like a germaphobe. I don't want to touch anybody. If you go around kissing everybody the first date, you know, you might, you might attract a lot of germs. You want to like kind of screen some people. So then the second date, okay, you, you got to hit first base. Third date, maybe they're a little bit slow you're still getting to know each other, you know, okay, fine. Like a peck on the cheek or something. Fourth date, okay, still there. But I think by the fifth date, you definitely, definitely need to reach second base already. And as you can see, seventh date, eighth date should be third base. And if you are going on a ninth or 10th date, I think you probably should hit a home run by now. Keep in mind the blue is a conservative number. I think this is like, the latest a girl should delay. Of course, this is just what I have observed. And if you are way beyond this, then there is a problem. You really should look at, you know, what is going on here? Is this relationship really moving forward at all? All the very successful relationships I've had resides in this green band over here. Because in the end, when you date someone, you are attracted to them. Hopefully they are attracted to you as well. And if it goes well, you know, you communicate and stuff, you, you kind of want to start touching, you know, like, so you hit first base. And then I think the fastest you want to go is one base per date. And then probably delayed a little bit when you are at third base. So the third and fourth date, you are at th uh, third base. The fastest, the fastest that you should ever hit a home run is on the fifth date. If you are ever faster than this, there might be a problem because I don't want to call any names or anything, but um, it's a little bit too rushed. You actually don't need to rush so fast, right? Because you are dating, you are going to be seeing each other a lot more in the future. So why not take your time? So if on the first date you are on second base, third base, or you know fourth base home run, um, this type of girl, you know, I can't say very much other than that. That's all I have to say about finances and dating. Let me know if you guys are interested in knowing more or like where to date, what strategies or whatnot. I'm not exactly a dating coach, but I do have my dating experience that I can share with you guys. Let me know if you guys are interested. Give me a like on this video and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.